Marcel Reese played when I fell in love with the NFL. Okay, eight of those seasons with the Oakland Raiders. Listen, Marcel, you were known for like being versatile. You were the playmaker. And at the fullback position, which is long gone and lost, a three-time Pro Bowler, Marcel Reese, how are you? Oh, well, okay. Nice to finally be on with you. Congratulations to you. The set looks great. Uh, I have to tell you, before, when I was still playing, yeah. there was this clip going on <laughs> about how you killed fantasy one year by putting me on your team. That's and, right. Uh, I got to thank you for that. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, I want to talk about the fullback position. I want to talk about all of that. But I want to know what you've been doing since leaving the NFL. What's going on? So I recently resigned as the chief strategy officer for the Raiders, I'm basically operating as a COO and um, wow. just spending some more time with the family right now and, and doing some consulting and, and having some fun and, and watching you, watching you kill it right now. <laughs> do you want to do media potentially? I feel like you could and you should. Let, let's talk about it. You know, I did I did media right after retirement before I went back to the Raiders and, and served in, the, uh, in my executive role. So getting back into it, maybe, maybe one day we'll be able to co-host the show together okay oh okay Lord, now we're just manifesting things which we love to see <laughs> well so so if we were doing a show together what would you lead the show with after that raiders game last last night Devonte? absolutely let's you get have into to. it what happened you have what happened listen you have, you have the best receiver in the game and i'll just i'll just leave everyone with the first half we have the first half of football with zero receptions to wide receivers and one interception in an attempt to Devonte adams you just cannot play football that way especially when you have a guy like Devonte adams on your roster on the sideline there what do we what do we change? It's not like Josh McDaniels doesn't know that. It's not like we all don't know that Devontae Adams is a special player, one of the best. And then I mean, and there was that third down conversion. He messed. I mean, that was on him, of course. But like he would have yeah. had a ninety eight yard touchdown. He would have had another touchdown. How does this get fixed, in your opinion? I think it all starts with Josh Jacobs. It all starts hmm. with the running game. You're talking about the the reigning defending rushing champion and Josh Jacobs who has yet to get going yet we have to find a way to manufacture yards and touches for Josh Jacobs because when Josh Jacobs is going you ha you can't double team Devontae Adams it opens everything up the entire offense it helps Josh McDaniels be more creative helps guys like Hunter Renfro get open in the slot it helps Jimmy Garoppolo, take all the pressure off of him. And also that defense. The defense is on the field for so long. You got a guy like Max Crosby who's on the field all night long. Yeah. And he makes amazing plays. But you got to get guys rest, and you have to help them and take pressure off them. And it all starts with Josh Jacobs. We have to get him going. We have to manufacture touches for him. And, um, and so they can load the box up and get one-on-ones. You think Adams... Is there any possibility based on body language? You spent a lot of time in that. Is there a world where he gets moved before this 4 p.m. trade deadline? No, that's my short answer. Devontae is an ultimate competitor. He wants to win football games. He's never going to quit on his team. And the body language that you see is just absolute frustration because he knows the potential that this team has and just falling so short of what, what they can do. I think the Raiders, you know, you're talking a run game, which I love because you played the fullback position and it just like makes me happy to hear about it. I think the Raiders might need a player like you. Did you know, my friend, that it was exactly 13 years ago today, October 31st, 2010, where y'all took care of the Seahawks 33-3? What do you remember about this, Marcel? What I remember from it right now is Lawyer Malloy, Law Dog, is still upset with me right now for catching that pass <laughs> on fourth down on him. And I will never let him, Earl Thomas, or any of the Legion of Boom forget about it. All my friends, but uh, again, th those are some competitive days and, and fun times, and, and we had a a very creative offensive coordinator in, in uh, Hugh Jackson and Tom Cable, and those are some fun days right there for the Raider Nation. Let's not pretend that you went and played the wide receiver position back at Washington, <laughs> right? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes absolutely. Uh, go okay. dogs. Yeah, go dogs. exactly. I mean, that was an, 122 scrimmage yards, one touchdown. Did you want the big stat lines? Like, I, I, you know, I was thinking about you. We were coming in from the commercial break, and I'm talking about fantasy football and who to pick up. And, like, the fullback just, I was doing it, and I was like, he's got to hate this. He's got to hate that I'm talking about guys with, with amazing stat lines. You know, I never really thought about the stat lines. It was just all about winning and making plays. We had so many athletes on our team at the time that it was just about competing with each other every single day at practice and then making it happen and, and 
and um, making it happen on Sundays and trying to win games. Our fan base is second to none. So when, when we had that Coliseum rocking, it was a beautiful place to be. Now, in the, today's NFL, the fullback position, it's, I don't, is it extinct? Is it in, it's definitely endangered, right? It's, let's, let's call it dormant. Dormant. Okay, okay. So you got your use. See, I love C.J. Ham. Anytime C.J. Ham does anything, I'm like, let's go! I just, uh, you know, it just has lulls, and then all of a sudden it comes back. It really only takes one creative mind, like um, a Sean McVay, he brings something back, or Josh McDaniels, he's bringing something back. And it's all about personnel. Hmm. If, if a guy like Josh McDaniels has the personnel, he's going to play it. You know, you saw him with the double tight ends in, in uh, New England. You saw him with uh, three wide receiver sets in in, uh, in New England as well. Identities continue to change. And if we go back to the Raiders, it's all about understanding that identity and leaning on it. And it's it's a game-by-game -game basis, but you have to have a, an, an identity to lean on. And uh, like I said, the Raiders starts with the run game. It has to start with the run mm -hmm. game. And then you have the big play potential with your best wide, best wide receiver in the league. And uh, when you have a fullback... Uh, you know, whether it's myself or it's Kyle Huszczyk or it's uh, Sherman or any of those guys, mm -hmm. you just kind of, it gives the offense so much versatility. You know, you gain two roster spots if you're a general manager where a guy can play tight end, he can run the ball, he can pass block, he can play special teams, he can do all those things, whether it's a Vonta Leach type guy or a Lorenzo Neal type guy yeah. or a Mike Allstott type Let's guy. Go. You know, there's there's plenty of fullbacks out there that, that we can start throwing names out there. See, but we just got to get dudes, one in the Hall of Fame. Those dudes were scary. Like, we're, like we were talking about with McVay and Shanahan, like, 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 let's get creative. Let's get cute. Let's get like, you know, use offensive weapons. Like, no, like I miss, and it's Halloween, so let's just do this. You mentioned yeah. some of these names. I like some of the best fullbacks all time were the scariest guys on the field at any given time. I'm gonna show you some pictures of some of the greatest fullbacks, and I want you to tell me what made them so scary in honor of Halloween. And let's start with Larry Zonka. Let's go right to Miami. What made this dude Ooh. so scary? See, Larry Zonka was, if you even look, look at this play, he sees this guy coming and he's about to put his knee right in that guy's <laughs> temple right now and not even miss a step. I love it. Larry Zonka was a massive beast and he could do it all. We're going to count Jim Brown as a fullback in honor of today's day now that you're here. What made Jim, just go for it. Jim Brown scary because? Nobody can touch him. <laughs> he was just special. He was long, he was fast, and he was special. How about Tampa Bay Bucks, Mike Allstott, you just mentioned him. Look at him. <laughs> this dude has a this dude has a ball in his hand and a cowboy collar on. Like look, he, he has the big neck roll cowboy collar, no neck at all. And uh you see a guy come out there with a with a wrist wrap, tape, and no gloves on. He is not trying to be pretty. Sean Springs has no chance right here. No, no chance. No chance. No chance at one all. One last one. Another former Oakland Raider. A guy used to work with John Ritchie. What made John Ritchie so scary? He's smiling and bleeding at the same time right now in this picture. I think that says it all. John Ritchie was a good dude. He's a special dude. Doesn't have the big pads, but he had heart and he was tough as nails. What made you so scary, Marcel? I just refused to lose. I refused to lose, and uh, and that, that was it. Give me anything and everything, and I was never wanted to come off the field. I always wanted to help my teammates and protect them and uh, and win football games. I love that. We have some some NFL news, not Raiders news. Montez Sweat traded to the Bears. So I, we, we said commanders. Commanders are going to be sellers, right? They're going to – that's what they said. They lose to Philly. They're, they're open. What do you think of this? The first thing I think of is they got to move Chase Young. Chase Young's got to go somewhere. I, I, I'm thinking the same thing. Okay? We're on the same page. I could see the commanders as being sellers. I just couldn't see the Bears as being buyers right now. That's a, that's an interesting move for the Bears. But listen, Sweat is is a is a game breaker type oh, yeah. of uh, defensive player. So I can see why anyone would want to have him. Um, I would have expected one of these contenders to go after him. Yeah, I don't know what the Chicago part of that is, but I will say Chase Young. I made the case earlier in the show that he should go to the Niners, reunite with Bosa. Ohio's you're trying to, the sacks aren't happening. You're trying happening. to give him the trophy? Well, the sa what do you mean? Bosa's the sacks aren't coming since he put on that skim stuff. I haven't seen that's all I've seen. Where are we go? Well, like, come on, Bosa's <laughs> got to turn it up a little bit. You're as not giving them sacks, the Kardashian like, curse, are you? No, 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 but I would never. They're, out, they're outside the top 20, so the whole NBA is cursed? I hope not. Um, outside the top 20 in sacks, I'm looking at it right now, they're 21st on third down as well. 
Brock Purdy to me hasn't been the problem with this contending team. It's really the defense and like pressure is fine, but they got to get home. What about Chase this? Young. What if you have Minnesota being sellers right now because of yes, uh, the injury to Kirk? You can't. They can't be sellers. Oh, they're on top. Okay. Okay. I'll, okay. Let's say they are. Okay. Neil Hunter to 49ers. Now I like that too. No, I like they need help with defense. It's crazy that we're talking about the Niners needing help. With, they got to take some pressure off the DBs. They got to do their. I, I don't. Uh, I don't hate that move. You have to. What made the What makes the Niners so good, mm -hmm. especially over the when Brock Purdy started playing, is their defense took so much pressure off of their offense. Brock Purdy didn't have any pressure. He could just go back there and play football. I've been there when we first drafted Derek Carr and we decided to start him. We were going to play good defense. We, were, we, as an offensive playmakers, were going to take on the leadership role. So our young quarterback, all he had to do was go out and play. So they start dealing with injuries. You have to revamp that defense, and they need a splash right now. Guys like Daniil Hunter or or even Montrez Sweat could have helped yeah. them as well. I mean, I'm looking. I'm thinking Bears. Bears have way over $100 million in cap space. And I, I imagine they're just – and obviously they know they got to revamp the defense, and they're probably just trying to get ahead of it before next yeah, year. We'll get a little head start action. You're absolutely right. They got to move fast. By getting sweat. All right, you played for Dennis Allen. A couple more questions here. And you, you played with Derek Carr during your time with the Raiders. They're reunited in New Orleans. Marcel, take me in. Like, for your experience with them, what can you point to as why the pair, you know, is one that can work for years to come? Well, because uh, when we talk about pressure, I think they take the pressure off each other. Derek is a guy who can run his own offense and doesn't need a ton of um, micromanaging, if you will. And Dennis Allen, on the other hand, is a guy who loves to sink himself into a defense and be that mad scientist of a defensive mm -hmm. designer, scheme maker, caller, however you want to want to place it. So really, they're just they're kind of a perfect match where they both sit in their own zones and, and kind of do their thing. Uh, really, right now, yeah. if you're talking about the Saints, yeah. that offense just needs time. They need time to get used to Derek Carr. They need time to get used to his timing. Um, you know, a guy like Alvin Kamara, who was going to be huge for Derek Carr. I know coming from that running back position, when you're coming out of the backfield and, and Derek Carr is flushing out, he loves to find those running backs who can make plays for him. And he needs to get those guys involved early and often so he can go to the Mike Thomases and the um, – Foster Moreau's down the field. Yeah, and the uh, the Olaves and company. Do you think that exactly. Jimmy? Do you think that uh, that Der that Devontae Adams misses Derek Carr? <laughs> Why are you laughing? It's oh, a good question. <laughs> it is. It's a great question. Kind of a loaded question. I just um, listen to what I do. Go on. I, <laughs> yes. Short answer is yes. I think he misses him as a friend and a quarterback. What do you think he misses um, most about him as a quarterback? The familiarity. <laughs> that's, that's such a bogus, that is such a BS answer. What does he miss? What does Derek have that maybe, you know, Derek, that Devontae Adams misses every day when he's going into the facility? Derek understood when it was time to make a play, get the ball to Devontae by any means necessary. Get the ball to Devontae by any means necessary. We love it. And good luck, by the way. We mentioned University of Washington where you were wide receiver, my friend. Hey, I don't play. I don't like college. I don't look. I, I'm not going to pronounce this guy's last name, this Heisman Trophy candidate. I don't know what it is. One of you, I don't know what it is. Michael Penix. Penix. Okay, great. I'm glad you said it correctly so I didn't mess it up. Um, so they're going to be USC this weekend, yeah? On your way out? Yes. Let's go get it. Go dogs. CFP, no here we come. Pac-12 championship. Okay, are you coming to the Pac-12 championship with me? Invite Marcel. You're a delight. You're lovely. Absolutely. If you if you want to take me when I look like this after today, I dressed up like Will Ferrell. I had a wig, the whole thing. Like, let's go, Marcel. Let's go. Me, you, Allegiant Stadium, Las Vegas, Pac-12 championship oh in God. December. It's, it's a day. All it. right, Marcel, we're doing it. All right, I'll talk to you a little bit later. We gotta go. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest Up and Adams content right on YouTube.